Hi everyone, I have uh, Patty here and I am really excited to find out your story. Thank you so much for making it in. And uh, before we get to the self myofascial release techniques and self massage stuff, I was kind of hoping everyone could hear a little bit about your background and your story. Sure, sure. Um, I am a breast cancer survivor. I've had four reconstructive surgeries with one more to go. Um, so it has been a long road but I'm happy to share my little bit about my journey, but especially my successes with my recovery. Um, I thought that would be helpful, especially with the tools that RAD offers and things that you can have at your disposal just really easily. Yeah, for sure. So when, when did all this uh, start for you? If you, if you don't mind sharing, um, roughly when in your life were you diagnosed with cancer and, and you know, what was the beginning of that journey like? Okay, so um, I found out I had breast cancer when I was 48 years old with no family history whatsoever. Wow. I truly believe that stress caused my breast cancer um, and a routine annual mammogram uh, essentially saved my life. Um, so obviously I had to learn some relaxation techniques yeah. <laughs> when I got that news. Um, and I spent that year um, diving into yoga, self-massage, um, I reevaluated my nutrition my eating habits, made sure I got enough outdoor fresh air and fresh exercise. Air. So that was all part of that that year. Um, and so um, I think it'd be really neat to be able to share um, some of the massage techniques that helped me heal um, because it reduced um, inflammation. Mm -hmm. It improved circulation and mobility. Nice. I hear that it has that effect. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <clears throat> When you were first diagnosed, you said you were 48 years old, no family history, mm -hmm. um, which is actually really surprising because I know I'll, I'll get to this later, but um, I actually have some family history with this as well. It's uh, dear to my heart and um, but it does run in my family. So um, I'm assuming that you were very persistent at getting your annuals being right. more uh, proactive than reactive. Right, right. Yeah. Of course, the, the self-checks you can do yourself, easy mm -hmm. to learn. Um, doing the uh, mammograms yearly, um, that for me, that is how I found my cancer. I had no signs, like I said, no family history at all. Um, but I went through um, a few very stressful times in my life. And looking back, um, I can almost follow the dots. You know, stressful period in, in your life, um, moving, uh, life changes, yeah. um, it all kind of piles up. I sometimes think of it as a glass of water and the stress is like the water that fills and fills. And once it reaches the top of the glass, it spills over. Mm -hmm. And that's when, in my opinion, when you can get disease. So whether it's cancer, autoimmune disease, just things that we seem to get, I truly believe one day they're gonna say stress really does cause disease. So yeah. that's why these techniques and breathing and yoga and massage, it all helps us calm down our nervous system and that's the key. Yeah. And if you can just find time to do it every day, during the day even, um, that's how we can do our best yeah. to stay healthy and avoid disease, For in sure. my opinion. Yeah. Um, a lot of people after surgery don't expect the pain as the scar is, is healing across your chest. Um, some people experience lack of range of motion. So even brushing their hair um, is painful mm. and tight. So that's why a lot of um, the massages that we're gonna do and I'm gonna demonstrate today, open up that area, release the tension by elongating the fascia. So just your range of motion starts to improve, which means your circulation's improving and you start to feel better, which yeah. after surgery, that's what we're trying to do is just feel better, right? right. So um, I would like to share these massage techniques that helped my body heal and they might help others as well. And the main reason is that we're improving circulation, we're improving our mobility, and we're decreasing inflammation and all those things help you heal. So yeah. these are all wonderful things to, to consider and try as you're healing, whether you're at the tail end of your recovery, whether it's been a while and you just feel like you're still too tight and uncomfortable. And um, that goes a lot for our mental health too. Yeah. You know, there's just some, some peace you get feeling normal again, feeling like you have your, your regular range of motion and you just feel like it's over. Yeah. And we deserve it, I think, after everything we've been through, right? So <laughs> I'm sure. And I'm, I'm guessing there is also a sense of self-control. Sure. You know, where you, 
you have the ability to make an impact. This can help <clears throat> you empower yourself. Mm -hmm. You have the tools. We have tools here. There's tools that you have at home. You have your own hands, which are tools. Yeah. You have your own knowledge that you know your own body. You're your best advocate. You know what your body needs and it will tell you. Yeah. So it's wonderful. I love that. Yeah. I love it. All right, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? <laughs> yep, yep. I'm ready. Okay. From what I know, all we're gonna need for now is our hands. Just your hands. Love it, um, all right. So I just wanna say first, it's important to note that um, this is what worked for me. I had uh, a lumpectomy and then I had a double mastectomy. So I can only speak to those surgeries and my own recovery. Right. Um, so first I just wanna recommend that you get some medical clearance and meet with a physical therapist that's trained in post mastectomy or whatever your surgery was um, training. So that person really can help you specifically with um, our needs post, yeah. post surgery. Um, so um, my doctor cleared me and I was sent to a physical therapist that did specialize in post mastectomy people mm -hmm. and she first worked on my scar. So some gentle scar um, massage is really done by a physical therapist at first and then she, can, she or he can teach you how to do it. Um, and then lymphatic draining massage. After surgery it's important that a, a trained person start that. You don't want to follow this video really or other videos right away. You right. need your doctor to say okay you're clear. Yeah. Now you can do it yourself. Great so that's point. what that's Love what it. we're kind of focusing on here. Yeah. Um, so I learned non-aggressive myofascial release techniques. Non-aggressive, so no pain, no gain. Well, exactly. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> the opposite of that I am so glad you said that because you shouldn't feel any pain. Mm -hmm. Like in yoga, like yeah. in so many things, we don't have to push through it. Especially this is a very sensitive area. You've had sure. major, major surgery. Right. So be kind to yourself and and let your body respond to you as you're as you're doing your own massage. If it feels good, pause, relax, breathe in, breathe out, and let that that little massage in that spot relax. Yeah. That's what's wonderful about the fascia that it responds so well to that. It sure does. So um, okay, right. so we'll start our our lymphatic massage warm up. I'll call it. Love um, it. And lymph for those people that don't know, it um, collects and filters fluid from all tissues throughout the body. It's just a very important uh, part of our body that we should be aware of. Sure. And if we don't move, it doesn't move. Right. So this massage is just kind of helping it move a little more, which mm -hmm. helps it collect um, waste products, bacteria, and it helps it circulate even faster. And we want that. Right. That helps our swelling. Improves recovery, Absolutely. faster. Absolutely, circulation, okay. everything. So. Cool. Of course, we would need to do both sides, but for the sake of the video, we'll just do one side. Love it. Um, you want to elevate the part that we're going to start with above the heart. So we're going to work on our massage from the fingers down. Okay. There's three collection sites mainly with lymph drainage, the neck, the armpits, and the groin. Okay. We'll just focus up here for today. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to think, keep that in mind. Do you want to think about three things, direction, pressure, and pace? So your direction is always toward those lymph drainage or collection sites. Mm -hmm. Your pressure is not hard, yeah. just gentle, maybe stroking a, a dog, okay. you know, just a little bit of pressure and then your pace. It shouldn't be jerky. It should be smooth. Okay. I'm okay. sure that has something to do with the stress levels and your heart rate and It, it all does. That. And even how the body's going to respond, how the lymph is going to move. You want right. it to move in a fluid way toward those collection sites so it can circulate, go through your liver and just uh, yeah. help your body. Um, so why don't we start with our fingers in the air okay. and let's see if I turn myself a little bit more. I'm going to just kind of squeeze the top of my pinky and then kind of come down to the base. And I'm going to do that with each finger. Just gently remember direction. We're aiming toward this collection site and then pressure. I'm just kind of gently, I'm giving it a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Okay. And you, want yours, feels good. you want yours high. Oh, okay. Okay. Right, it's okay. <laughs> and then your thumb. And I never really knew the palm has wonderful, like oh, an yeah. a, a great, amazing amount of lymph vessels. Yeah. So I like to use my thumb, back of the hand. So we've kind of given ourselves a little hand massage, but always in the direction toward that collection site. At the joints, I like to do a little circular motion on the inside of my wrist, on the outside of my wrist. I, I like to use my palm for that, but you could use your fingers too. Okay. okay, so now we're continuing, keeping in mind direction. I'll raise, I'll raise my sleeve a little bit. So I'm going to, just, it could be like a little pumping action. It could be a glide. There you go. Nice and slow. So yep, yep. <laughs> I know. Arms gonna get tired. Shoulder again. Right now. <laughs> and then when you get to the joint of the elbow, kind of inside the elbow, a little circle. 
It should feel good. It kind of feel like you're waking up your arm, you know? I think for me, with all the arm hair I have, I think maybe, have you ever used lotion? I'm glad you brought that up. Because um, that feels a little they, rough. It does, but they actually say that that's the best way to do it. Really? I'm sure if it bothered you, you could put oil, uh, yeah. oil or lotion on. Yeah. But skin on skin, I purposely don't have any lotion on. Just okay. to see. Um, good, good know. Yeah. <laughs> to look into all the reasons why, but maybe it's the simple friction. Yeah. Um, for the upper arm, we're gonna to go toward the back. So maybe I'll turn my arm a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna to go to the back of the arm. Oops. <laughs> Get that shoulder <laughs> And go up. toward my neck. Okay, so, so I'm opening up, the up, elbow. opening up this channel. Yep, going okay. toward my neck. I was going toward my armpit, but remember we have a collection site at the neck. The neck yeah. So now I've kind of opened the channel from the fingers and I went all the way to the neck. So everything I've kind of moved gently down here is already going toward the neck. All we, all we have left is our inner upper arm. So I'm gonna roll that from the inside out. And I bet me having this, you know, I'm gonna <laughs> like take this off, this is... I should take mine off too. Uh, so, so, this, we, so it's like this? Right, so we've opened up the channel. So now your inner arm, whoo, lymph goes around and then up <laughs> here. Okay, so now we've, we've done the arm, We've collected to the neck and the armpit. So now that we're in the neck, there's three little areas to do. And the neck is really important. There's a lot of lymph here. So I like to just start with maybe my middle fingers and I just gently start behind the ear. You know, you have lymph nodes here that yeah. you feel when you're not feeling well. Just very gently come down. Now, ideally you can do this 10 to 15 times per spot. So even though we rush through the hand, that could have been much, much slower. Yeah. Okay, so we would do 10, 10 to 15 times very gently. It actually feels this calming, feels, doesn't it? Yeah, and I was going to mention, by the way, this is my first time doing this, so I... I sprung it on him this yeah, morning. Yeah, she totally did, and I love it. <laughs> so we're going to do it. some limp She's work. like, you're going to learn this. Okay, <laughs> great. I love it. To finish up the neck, two different ways. Some people like to just kind of fan their hands like this, so their tops of their fingers, maybe index, middle, and third finger. You're going to kind of bring the skin a little bit in and down toward that. There's like a little dip in your collarbone. So I go in one. and then down? Right, don't go past your collarbone, just go into that little, it's like here's my dip. Little, little, oh, yeah. okay. little, um, little crevice there? Yeah, okay. yeah. So if you don't want to cross your hands, you can also just do, since you started here, just do maybe your um, two fingers and you want to just go in and down. Bringing, kind of pulling the skin a little bit with you, yeah. which we do with the rad tools as well. Shearing, correct? Sure do, yeah. Or is it flushing? Shearing, really, right? Shearing is across like the orientation of or or original direction of like a muscle. Okay, so so if we're going with that CM, when we go um, horizontal, yeah, that's a shear. Okay. So it's kind of like flushing, shearing all in one. Yes, it's kind of <laughs> it nice. is. The next one is if you put, you could do all four fingers on the sides of your neck. Okay, and you're gonna pull your skin back. Oh. I'll lose about 10 years right here <laughs> and then go down like a J. Oh, okay. There you go. You did it perfectly. Your, your fingers kind of fanned out. Nice. So pull the skin back just a little bit. Again, no pain. Would you mind actually turning around and showing oh, everyone yeah. what that looks put like? Oh, yeah. my hair up. Yeah. Yeah, just totally fine. Maybe on the side? Yeah. Okay. So down and back. Okay. So it's like you're tracing the upper traps. Right. Along the side of the neck and then back and down. Nice. And then the last one I'll turn around for a little more. You're gonna put both fingers at the base of the hairline, okay? And we're gonna come in, but you can see my skin gathering, mm -hmm. but it's not painful, it actually feels good. Yeah. And then down. Okay. So, I'm gonna try that? Yeah. In and down. Um, the last is, would be the chest, and we're going to use our armpit collection area. So we're going to start with kind of your fingers in an L, go under the armpit, gently kind of lift it up. The shoulders shouldn't rise, so you okay. want it to you want to stay soft and and relax. And again, like you said, breathing. So even just if it, if it feels more comfortable, just to take a nice deep breath in before you even start any of these motions. Yeah. Breathe out, <sighs> kind of relax as your shoulders go down, and then you're going to lift up and toward the neck. So am I taking the skin from my inner arm or in the armpit? Right in the armpit. armpit so going okay. straight up. Okay, you've kind of moved the flesh up. Uh-huh. And then you're gonna move it kind of on an angle toward the neck. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Now you can release that and go all the way across to the other collection site. 
I sometimes skip that part and I just do the armpit up and toward the neck. And then you can kind of come a little bit forward and then up and toward the neck or all the way across to the other collection site. Now okay. what's, what's your take on how, you know, especially for females and breast tissue, should they stay above so breast tissue or? Just getting to that right okay, now. Okay, cool, yep, cool. No, you're <laughs> one step ahead of me. Okay, you're sorry. good. You're thinking like, Always okay, thinking. <laughs> no, what, what about those people? So yeah. here's the key. If you had a mastectomy, you are allowed to do an upper chest massage from the scar up, not on the scar. Okay. So if your scar went across, you want to go right above, above the scar and you're going to go. So now our two choices are what? Armpit or neck? right for the collection site so we're just going to gently just gently kind of move the limb to the neck and down the center i kind of aim for the center so i kind of come up okay i'm on the front yeah okay. just come straight up and then your fingers kind of guide you here now some people don't like you using just the fingers they'll use the whole hand so you can use the top part of your hand just gently up and toward the neck if you've had a lumpectomy you want to avoid your breast tissue Okay. man or a woman okay male or female yeah so you want to kind of go kind of above your breast tissue and it's going to be a smaller motion obviously so maybe from here into the neck okay so pretend you had a lumpectomy okay so you're going to yep you're going to go above your breast tissue maybe about here uh -huh. and aim for inside okay Come up and into the neck there you go and right there Just like jump. into that little notch yeah, right there so it's a good place to aim because we all can find here. that you know yeah those landmarks definitely help. Yeah, like, yeah. What's my goal here? Where am I going? <laughs> what's my destination? So what we've done is we've we've helped the lymph circulate and filter and move mm -hmm. and ideally away from swollen areas. Yeah. So if you are clear to do this and you've met with your physical therapist and they've already worked on your scar and they've already done their own lymphatic drainage massage and now it's your turn to continue the good work, this is what you can do. Awesome. So just now you we're can bring these up. anywhere you want. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so we're yeah. ready really to move now. Okay. We can do more with our fascia and our muscles. We've warmed up the area and we've moved our lymph. So awesome. So that good. was our warm up before self fascia right. release. If right. we have a time. Right. So I mean, like you said, I think it's a great point. Obviously you want to do both sides, right. um, breathe while you're doing it to calm right. down the nervous system. That'll help vasodilation and help, mm -hmm. you know, really push the lymph you know easier right, right. Um, which will improve recovery and right, overall right. comfort um, for most people and what if we don't have 20 minutes what if we just had 10 would you recommend this would you recommend self myofascial release with a tool for a short time i would actually start with the breathing which we didn't start with here but mm -hmm. basically we could even just do a, a, a quickie right now yeah. i like to put my fingers and my hands on my, my belly yeah. and you could do this if you're sitting at your desk at work you can do it standing you can do it laying down anytime and really all we're doing is trying to get get that signal to the nervous system to calm down mm -hmm. that's the goal and that can be really fast you can do that in just a second or two right so we we'll just want to fill up our belly and if you if i start with my fingers together and i want to inhale making my belly fill so why if you watch my on fingers the on the inhale so okay. my fingers spread mm -hmm. and then exhale it out am i spreading let's see yes now you're going more in and out forward and back mm -hmm. i see you going this way I, I'm trying to go a little wide too. Oh, okay. That takes some practice yeah. though. Yeah, I so, like doing this too for my ribs. Yes. Yep, and sometimes even the backs of your hands, if you put it yeah. on, right under your armpits and That's you inhale. Idea. I borrowed that from somebody. You can do this like while standing in line at the market. Yeah, I think you're doing the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right, so we're back and we have um, the tools that we're going to be doing some self myofascial release with. Uh, what do you recommend here? What are these? Uh, so this is a block. Um, and if you don't have an actual yoga block or rad block, anything that is in this shape, you really can use if you're home. Okay. Um, the tools, uh, I first started learning about self, self myofascial release on my own, did my own inquiring. I went to a party store and got a bouncy ball nice. um, and started rolling on the bouncy ball, learning more, sought out some training. And then I discovered rad. Um, and what's neat is this is essentially the same size as the bouncy ball that I got nice. way back, um, but it's designed for massage. It yeah. is designed to roll on your skin. It's mm -hmm. um, 
Remind me again, the material it's is... It's medical grade silicone. That's it. Yeah, so it, it's made, you're right, it's made to lightly grab at the skin. Right. Not painfully pull at it, of course, but to really help that slide and glide of yeah. the superficial structures as well as lymph. Right, yeah. right. So with a tool like this, um, what we're trying to do is soft tissue therapy, and that is really releasing the tension from the fascia. And fascia is kind of a buzzword nowadays. I love that there's so much more coming out there, kind of like yeah. the vagus nerve. Yeah. Two wonderful things to learn more about. Um, but fascia is continuous connective tissue. It's a system in our body. It goes over our bones and our joints and our muscles and our nerve endings. It's um, someone, I heard someone describe it as like plastic wrap around everything in your insides, mm -hmm. which is kind of a good visual if you need it. Yeah. Um, and it's supposed to glide and move smoothly and um, not have any kind of stopping points. Mm -hmm. And when you massage with a tool like this um, and you're doing self-massage, even, even with your hands, if you go deeper than we did with the lymph, when we're actually massaging ourselves, um, we're moving, elongating, and hydrating the fascia. Yeah. which is wonderful yeah um, because once we move that fascia and it and it can glide better over all these inner parts mm -hmm. muscles bones joints um, we move better we feel better For sure. and our our system our fascia our muscles is actually hydrated mm -hmm. which is so interesting you think you have to drink water which of course you do For that's sure. one way to, to hydrate everything but by self-massage especially using tools like this, we can actually hydrate our fascia. Yep. So that's really neat. And improve movement and yep. overall feeling. Right, right. Yeah, I love it. Uh, blood flow, it promotes mm -hmm. blood flow. And of course, lymph move it, movement, mm -hmm. it will help with that as well. Yeah. Um, so the goal is to have our fascia glide and feel better. And um, once we feel better physically, we feel better mentally right. and emotionally. And um, really, like I said before, it's kind of what we deserve after everything we've been through, I kind of feel can imagine. <laughs> it's, all, it's all connected, right? Physical, yep. mental, emotional, all that. I'm going right. to get out of your way because okay. I think you're going to be using most yes. of this mat. I'm going gonna... to hang out over okay. here and probably Perfect. just throw some questions your way if you're okay Great. with that. Great. It's okay. So um, we're going to aim first. We're going to go on our, our tummy, our belly, and we're going to put the massage ball. The, I have the rad round for today. And we're going to find that area. This is my cancer side, actually. So um, it's a slightly different than my other side, mm. and I'm, I'm aware of that, and that's key. Know your body. You're your own best advocate, so you know where this needs to be and what you need, and your body yeah. will respond. It will tell you. Yeah. You just have to listen right. and be tuned in. So I'm going to aim for this area that's not on breast tissue, not on my shoulder. Here's my shoulder. It's this pocket, this little area okay. right in between. So it's almost so, like up at a diagonal right from the armpit? Right, I guess okay. you're right. If I put my fingers, like we did that one lymph move, up and then kind of in, right about there. Okay. So. And I'm sure like the exact spot is like you said, based on what you're all feeling, right. not you. Right, so everyone's right. different. I would even say maybe there isn't an exact spot. Right. It's, it's the spot that you feel, um, you could feel some tightness and as long as there isn't pain, stay there and, and let that release. Um, and we're gonna do some little micro movements too. So I'm gonna come down to my stomach, okay? And um, I'm gonna put the ball on this block just for some height. If you, if you um, are experimenting with different size balls, you do want them to be rubber. And if you don't have a block, a bigger ball, even the center ball, yeah. I could just offer that too, especially yeah. for a, um, a bigger person. Sure. Um, this is too big for me, uh -huh. but if I was um, taller, and just more muscular maybe, I could also try to try the bigger ball in that same spot. So without the block, you can use a ball, but the goal is to kind of hit that, hit that spot that we're trying to massage. Right. So I'll take this out for now, sure. thank you. Yep. And I'll put this here. I'm gonna aim for that spot. And it's gonna take a little shifting and maneuvering. Let's see. I like to bring my arm to a 90 degree angle and actually hold the block. For me, other people might want to just relax the arm down. Um, I don't suggest coming out yet until you have found that, that sweet spot. So don't move the arm yet. Take a minute, let the ball kind of just sit there. Now, it's important to not strain the neck while you're doing this. You are- So don't look at me. <laughs> don't look at you, don't look up. So I'm gonna put my head down. I'll turn this way, so it's not so weird. <laughs> I can make a fist and I can put my forehead on my fist. And I'm gonna relax the rest of my body, relax my hand. And I'm going to just sink into that 
ball. I'm actually, I, I was lucky I found a spot that is tight right away. It's, I'm feeling a, a little tightness, so my muscles are kind of fighting it a little bit. I'm gonna just breathe and breathe out. Do you recommend a certain number of breaths or what's, I, what's your call on that? You know, I think um, we wanna go nice and slowly. So really it could be up to you. Um, you might decide just a breathe in, um, a count of two or three. Um, some people like to count in for four and out for five. Yeah. When our exhale is a little bit longer than our inhale, um, it is a little bit more calming. Yeah. But um, but again, you don't, shouldn't be thinking too much about the breath here. Think about what you're feeling. Little micro movements. You can move your hips, move your shoulders, get comfortable. And if it's not working for you right away, don't worry about it. It's something that you might want to try another time, maybe this particular day. Your body's just not responding, that's okay. What you could do instead, is sit up and just massage the ball into that area or come up on your hands a little bit. I'm gonna raise my chest. The ball is just barely touching me. Mm. This might be enough, especially post-surgery for mm. some people. There's gonna be a lot of tightness there. The muscles, your whole body's been through a lot right there. So maybe this is all you do and that's okay. Yeah. This, is, this could be wonderful. And then you can determine, I'm gonna come down a little bit. Nope, I'm gonna come back up. So you are in charge. That's awesome. Okay, um, a little shift forward and back, Let's see if I can do it. Little forward, down, little back, um, little side to side. Little micro movements will just help you kind of get to the spots that, that most need it. And again, your body will tell you, just let it, let it talk to you and yeah. listen. Um, the other area, I'm gonna move this slightly over. I'm gonna aim for that subclavian. Yeah, cl subclavius. Subclavius. <laughs> um, and I'm feeling my collarbone. So if I rolled over just to show you, here's my collarbone. I'm gonna go right under it, right mm. there. And there's an artery that runs through that, that um, actually uh, feeds blood to, the, to breast tissue. So mm. those with a lumbectomy especially might really appreciate this. So now the ball is just under my collarbone, okay. um, just sitting there. It's a very tender spot. There's not a lot of um, flesh there, uh -huh. especially for us. So again, you might wanna to try to back, to stay back first see how it feels. I'm going to just see how my body's responding. Do I need to move it? Do I need to shift it? I think it's sure. important too. Like I like how you said, you know, every spot's different. Cause I mean, the collarbone, it's not a huge bone, but it's long enough to say where, right. you know, where below the collarbone right. should I go? And I love how you said, you know, everyone's going to be different. It's, you know, listen to your body. Don't yes. judge it harshly. Oh no. Um, you know, relax and, and, and just try to listen to yes. what your body is telling you. And I know that's kind of like an age old saying, you know, like, you know, breathe, you right, know, right. but it's so true. Like some things are a saying or, or they're so common because right. they're so true. Right, right. Then it's time to roll to our side. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna remove the ball, remove the block. Okay. I'm gonna roll to my side and I'm gonna look for that, that outer pocket of my external rotator. And I'm gonna put that ball, and I should sit up first and show you. Looking for, here's your armpit, you come down, and if I drew a line from my armpit straight across, there's a bone here, right here, and here's my armpit. It's this space kind of in between mm. the bone and the armpit. So I'm gonna aim for right there mm -hmm. when I roll down and just place the ball. Now this can be really tender mm -hmm. and uncomfortable. Uncomfortable is okay as long as it's not painful. Mm -hmm. So we wanna just, if I'm moving, you can see I'm moving, I'm adjusting. Okay, so I just found a very, very sensitive I just heard, area. I just heard you take a did, sharp breath yeah. in. <laughs> I, yes, I literally inhaled because it was uh, too much. Mm -hmm. So what I wanna do for myself, listening to my body and doing what's best for my body and opening up that whole um, whole shoulder, uh, uh, whole shoulder girdle? Joint. Joint? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay, pause, pause, pause. I'm sorry, Roy. Okay. Um, okay, so the ball is in this spot with the goal to open the entire shoulder armpit to relieve the tension and be able to stretch all around the shoulder joint to affect the trunk. So. What I'm going to do is find these spots, and I did find a real tight one, and then I'm going to let myself just take a moment 
and breathe as I sink down. You can almost, maybe you can see why my body even from yeah. just watching it gets it's me almost lower. like you're letting gravity do the work yes rather and, than like trying to push it to the floor or right. like force anything you're just right. kind of letting everything go the exhale just kind of lets you settle in now what's neat about the side is we want to the, that lower part of the armpit um, and the back ribs the front ribs need a little massage to kind of wake it up a little bit to kind of stretch so i'm using my hand as a Kind of spider tip fingers in front and i'm moving my shoulder back and forth you can also move your entire body forward mm. that's going to make the ball go a little bit behind me and a little bit back now that to me is too sensitive my body's saying no so i need to listen to my body mm. i'm not going to do that again <laughs> i'm going to stay right here and even just gentle gentle motions forward and back arm can go out you can actually put your head on a, on a block yeah that feels good. That thing's like the perfect height to use it really the pillow. Is. It really <laughs> is. So, um, if I can make one recommendation too, I, I like how you said, listen to your body and, um, you know, as you're rotating, you're moving the ball and it's scanning, you know, right. that area. Um, if it is too intense, that's, you know, we get asked that question a lot, like, why does Rad have so many tools? You know, like I can't pick just one. Right. And that's kind of the purpose where, depending on the density, depending on the diameter, we have kind of a, a different tool for different parts of our body with different mm -hmm. diameters, with different densities. So, you know, just continue to think the wider, like the helix right there that mm -hmm. Patty's using now, the wider the tool, the less penetration into tissues, generally speaking, you're gonna get, the more narrow the tool or smaller diameter, like the rad round or, you know, even the smaller blue uh, round right here, mm -hmm. those are going to penetrate a little bit more. Um, so it will probably increase the intensity. So um, everybody's different, like Patty is saying. So yeah, this kind feels, of find the right tool for you. This feels good. This is another option. Um, because of the, the design, mm -hmm. I put that spot right in the middle. Yeah. And so front and back, we're on either side yeah. of this. And even the, the grooves in it felt like a little massage. Yeah, so, and yeah. I want to bring that up too, because these grooves, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the grooves were actually made to act like cupping, like a massage. Oh, wonderful. So as you're rolling up and down any part of your body with the helix, and actually even the axle right behind you, same kind of design, it's actually made to like lightly grab at the skin as you're rolling up and down. So talk about lymph and right. you know, fluid exchange right. and pressurizing the system. That covers everything mm -hmm. right yeah. there. So let's see. Now, this again would be better for a, a, a bigger person, a taller mm -hmm. taller person, because that's a little too high for me. But you know what? It does, it does feel good too. <laughs> yeah. um, and this is a little bit lighter. So this is less, I'm feeling less pressure in that area, but mm -hmm. I am able to roll. Is that your first time using the axle? It is. Yeah, nice. It is. Um, I'm noticing that my, I'm just kind of, it's not straining, but my neck doesn't know what to do. So it's a little mm -hmm. too high. So I'll, I guess if you experiment with different positions. And sometimes of, even people will put the rat blog vertical. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I, I would need to kind of just relax. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're talking about moving a lot, micro movements and shifting. But the truth is, once you find that spot, let's see if I can find that spot where you heard me. <laughs> I think a sharp motion. Take a little <laughs> inhale. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm right about there. So if I just, just to show real quick, I'm gonna breathe in, breathe out. And as I sit, they a lot of the, the thought process is 60 to 90 seconds per spot. Now, mm -hmm. we often can't do that long, but if I chose to stay here or had the ability to stay here for 60 seconds, um, I really think what, what I would feel is a, a release. Mm -hmm. That muscle would kind of give out. It yeah. would say, okay, fine, I'm going to, I'm going to relax now. And that, then you just sink lower, breathe more. It's really like a, almost like a meditation. Yeah. If you're breathing and just relaxing there, even for 60 seconds. That's so, why I think for us here at Rad, we, we normally go with breath work over time. Right. Because you're right. A lot of people, when they hear time, they might be like, okay, well, I'm going to focus on time. And even if they do get that 60 to 90 seconds, what if they're breathing shallow? What if they're not breathing at all because it's so tight or it's so mm -hmm. maybe painful, unfortunately, get off that spot if it's painful. Right. Um, but if you focus on your breath work, I think time might, your perception of time yes. might shift. Yes, um, absolutely. And the focus now becomes your body, your diaphragm, relaxing mm -hmm. and surrendering into that release. Right, right. Um, versus, 
All right, cool, it's 30 seconds. I got 30 <laughs> more seconds. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> I think it's neat to do it before bed. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, especially if you took a nice hot shower and you're in your comfy PJs and um, you're ready, you're ready to relax. Your brain knows it's time. I'm gonna go to sleep soon. Yeah. If, especially if you're having trouble finding that time, that five minutes during the day, that gift of time. Give yourself the gift of time right before you go to bed, worst case, and try it. If you have a carpet in your bedroom or a spot nearby that's soft on the floor yeah. and experiment with some some tools and then just let yourself lay there um you might fall asleep right there yeah. but at least the bed will be close and you'll right. already be in your pj right in so <laughs> so um yeah so what's the next spot and, and if you don't mind as you're going to the next spot and you land on a on a, on a spot you like mm -hmm. that hopefully doesn't take your breath away too much <laughs> um i wouldn't mind kind of really quickly articulating for everyone what might be happening with the nervous system at that time and like major benefits with the stress level that you were talking about right, earlier. Right, so. um, Well, we have, we can use the floor like we are doing. There also is an option to stand and use the wall. Okay. So we could um, try the same um, massage techniques on a wall for people that just would rather stand. Yeah. Um, and again, with the ball, I, you are able to, to move them yourself with your hand. Sure. Um, using the the floor or the wall gives you that pressure. Sure. But especially, especially um, if your surgery um, was not that long ago and you've just been cleared, I think I would start just with with your hands, just little rolls. Yeah. Little rolls where we're talking about. Here's your collarbone right under it. So and you were mentioning something earlier about radiation and how the skin is like really sensitive to yes, that thank might be you. beneficial. Thank you, I didn't wanna forget to say that. Yeah. And that was not my experience. So that's why um, I can speak to what I went through with lumpectomy and mastectomy and where we did our different massages with our lymph. But if you have radiation, as far as what I've learned is the skin has been a bit compromised. It actually could be um, a different, could be a little deeper in color. You would definitely need clearance um, to move. Cause as we're doing, we're moving the skin you know we're really kind of shifting and, and letting the skin glide a little bit with the ball I would highly recommend getting clearance from your doctor physical therapist that the skin is safe enough right. to be stretched and moved a little mm -hmm. bit so Very thank important. you for bringing that yeah, up yeah thank you that's really important yeah and when we're talking about the wall what I like about that is you'll, you'll see this later but you control the pressure as well yes. just like you were talking about on the floor right um, so it kind of coincides with that model of no pain no gain no throw right. that out no we say it right no brain no gains use your brain think about it mm -hmm. if it hurts get off of it right um and choose a spot above it below it or beside right that particular spot if it's you know if a one to ten scale helps everyone if you're at it like a four three you know five tops you mm -hmm. know like that's usually pretty good right. uh, in our opinion for to get that sensory stimulation right um but you know you start approaching the seven eight nine ten it's like Right. You know, your nervous system is probably like in fight or flight now. Right. Blood pressure goes up, heart rate goes up, breathing rate is more shallow, thank stress so level much. goes up. No, thank you so much for saying that because the whole idea is to rest and relax. Yeah. And if you are pushing too hard, if you're pushing through pain, if you're like I before I lifted my chest when we were on the floor, if I'm down here saying, well, this is supposed to work, this is supposed to be what I'm feeling, and you're worried about it and you're thinking about it and you're tr and you have shallow breath like you said um you're doing the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing yeah. so always back out of anything it's even when i teach yoga i say don't be afraid to back out of the pose take a breath reassess reassess what i'm doing yeah. readjust then go back into totally. it in fact i often find that i do that just to do that yeah right? to find a better different spot to refocus what I'm doing yeah. and let my body speak to me a little bit better. Totally. So it's just, that's the key. Yeah. Really with everything, listen to your body. It will yeah. always tell you what it, what it needs. It really will. It tells you when it's hungry. It yeah. tells you when you need water. <laughs> it tells yeah. you a lot. All right. So what so, are we going to do next? So we could do the wall. Okay. Um, what, what's everyone going to need before we stand up? What's everyone going to yes, need? Yes. You really just need the ball of your choice, whether it's the rad, round which i do like because it is a little bit softer than some of the other rad balls mm -hmm. um or if you're you know playing around first with some, whatever balls you have maybe in your house depending on size um just yeah. that and a uh, an empty wall um ideally if you have a, a block if um you don't have a corner of the wall to to let your body go past because what we're going to do is we're going to have the ball 
in that spot again. We're really did, essentially going to do what we did on the floor, but standing. Okay. So this part of my body, if, if there was a corner mm -hmm. of the wall, I, it would allow me to go past the wall. Right. <clears throat> if I don't have a corner and I have a block, by putting the block, really we can experiment with the position. The little dimples in the edge of the block there yes, too? Yes, yes. Yeah. So by putting the ball in that same spot mm -hmm. with the wall, I'll be able to get a little bit closer. Yeah. You can even use these dimples oh, right yeah, here as right. well. Yeah, you got you got options. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm gonna use this one because I like personally. I don't like the block for me. Mm -hmm. I like to have a corner of a wall so I can make the right, my opposite side kind of go through with a lunge. Oh, but okay. we can try both. Yeah, for sure. It's great that we have options. All right, cool. Well, you guys get ready. We're gonna get ready. We'll see you back in a minute. Okay. okay. So if you don't feel like doing these massage techniques on the floor where the floor is dirty, you don't have a good spot, you can use a wall. I like having um, the, a, a wall with a corner, with an edge, and then I can bring the side that I'm not using kind of through and push. So you have some space, but if you have just a straight wall, it's fine, it's fine also. So I'm gonna show you using a straight wall, that's probably more common. Um, I'm gonna use the block to put the, the new ball that I'm using right now is called a recovery round. It's Red's newest ball. It's the softest one. So I really love this one. We could have used this all along and everything else we did, um, but I'm going to use it here. This particular block through Rad has an indent for the ball, which does help in your positioning. So we're going to aim for that same area we did while we were on the floor, which is basically right between the shoulder bone and breast tissue, but not on breast tissue. So right there, right in that little, that soft spot. Okay, but I'm gonna put the ball here, get my hair out of the way, and I'm gonna lean into, now you're gonna have to adjust for height. I would put your legs in kind of a lunge position so you can kind of use your own body weight toward the ball. Okay, so I feel pretty good. I can always adjust even while I'm doing this. I'm gonna relax my opposite arm, relax even the arm that I'm using on that side, or if you feel more comfortable having it up at a 90 degree angle. And I'm just really simply just leaning, just leaning into the ball. My feet are in a lunge position. If it's my left arm and left side, my left foot and knee is in a lunge position. And I'm gonna use that to kind of lean into the ball toward the wall. You can use both hands up if that feels better. Notice my block is moving because I'm adjusting, that's okay. So now I'm gonna straighten my block a little bit more. Now I'm in a good position. So from here, my choice is to kind of lean in, come out, little um, micro movements, forward, back. With my knees, I can go up and down. Now if the ball was larger, if I needed, um, if I didn't have the block, let's say, and I need to use a larger ball for my body size. <laughs> um, so I could use the ball in the same place. And then I don't really need the block, especially if it's larger. So I'm gonna put that ball right there and I'm gonna just lean into it again. Get my hair out of the way. So let's see, it's a little too high. Okay, so I'm breathing in, breathing out sinking down. It's amazing how much closer I can get to the wall with my breath, my exhale, breathe in. Maybe let yourself come off the wall, off the ball for a moment. Breathe out. Oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful massage there. With my, with my legs, my hip, and my knees bending, I can roll up and down. Micro movements also this way, forward and back. Now we didn't do the subclavial area. We can do that with either ball. I'll just use the large one since I have it here and I'm going to aim again. Here's my collarbone right under it. Okay. And this artery that runs through the subcla called subclavial muscle um, runs along the vagus nerve. So while you're massaging this muscle, you're actually helping the vagus nerve with its process of going and touching, spiraling out like a web all the different organs it runs down and around, all the way down to your digestion. So you're actually stimulating your digestion a little bit while you're, while you're doing this. So that is the really the front of the shoulder, opening up this whole area. We can use any size ball. 
the center ball or the large one or the smaller one, even on the uh, deltoids. And you want to just kind of lean into the ball again, breathing in, breathing out. And then inch by inch, you want to just, every time you move, take a minute, lean in, relax. Come off the ball slightly and move another inch. This is your deltoid area. You may or may not want to do this. I'm going, I'm going around. I'm going all the way around to the back, but it's one way to get to the back. So if you've already done the front and you just want a nice way, a little massage on the outside edge of your arm, and then you can, then you, by the time you get all the way to the back, you might find some new areas. I'm running out of wall space here. And then you can use it, use the ball in that back scapula area. I'm too high. <laughs> Sorry. Let me just try it one more time. Yeah. One more time. If I'm if I'm leaning on the ball this way, and I want to bring the ball to the back part of my of my shoulder, I can just simply go around. But I do encourage you to take your time. Go inch by inch. Stay there for a moment. Breathe in. Go all the way around. Breathe out. And then you can get to the yeah. back. Okay, so now what I've done is I brought the ball around me and this is just like where we were when I was on the floor on my side. I might want my arm up, leaning in, leaning out, little micro movements, wherever it feels good. Really, that's the whole idea. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Before we leave you today, um, I did want to ask Patty for any final recommendations, anything we haven't mentioned yet, anything you'd uh, recommend to our viewers before, during, or after. Sure. Um, I guess I just want to mention that early detection is key. Uh, it can make the difference between um, a small area and then not needing chemotherapy potentially because you, you caught it early. Um, or, or having too much time pass where you do need to go through chemotherapy and, and you're further along and the cancer could even move throughout your body. Not to scare you, but that's to say that early detection is key. So be aware of your body. Do the self-checks. Do your yearly mammograms. You're your best advocate. Take time. Think about conscious breathing. Fit it in during the day. Seek out what you need to be a healthier person. And um, listen to your body because it will always tell us. It really will. Um, and only do what feels good. Yeah. Never push through pain. Uh, take the time to find what works for you in your healing journey and beyond. I'm, I'm beyond and I'm still doing these massage uh, techniques to feel good, to continue my mobility. I don't want things to shorten and right. get tight again. So it is ongoing, but it's good. You yeah. know, even without breast cancer reconstruction surgery, even without going through all this, this is all good. Yeah. This really is good for, sure. for us. It's good for our body. And um, if you haven't scheduled your mammogram, if it's been at least a year, please do so. It could save your life like it really did mine. Thank you You're welcome. so much. You're welcome. <laughs> really appreciate you. <laughs> You're welcome. Before, now one last thing I wanted to share was I got a little printout here because um, I told you that this is actually near and dear to my right. heart. Um, I have a family history of cancer as well. And my cousin, um, who is such an amazing person to me, um, I asked her, her recommendation when we were thinking about doing this video together. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, what would you recommend is said you know, what would you want to share with everyone out there? Because uh, she's extremely active. She's a very holistic oriented individual. Um, so right. anyway, I wanted to share with you what she said, and it just kind of resonates with everything that mm -hmm. we've gone over here. She said, um, I would, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she said, everyone is at different levels of mobility after cancer, just like they were before cancer. And I'd recommend they work within those parameters while being open to taking baby steps to increase their current level of comfort and mobility. I built a retaining wall during chemo and painted my house within two weeks of a mastectomy. Strong or stupid? The jury is still out. <laughs> I love it. So I just love her advice on listen to your body like you keep saying treat it well, take steps in the right direction. They, they might be baby steps. Mm -hmm. um, I think as humans, we tend to want something very, very quickly. Right. Um, just remember it does take time without those leaps and bounds. Sometimes mm -hmm. it does take a little bit of attention every day. Right. Um, right. And we're all probably familiar, familiar with this quote, but the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. 
Mm -hmm. So start now. Absolutely. And don't compare yourself to others. Yeah. Right? Don't compare yourself to his cousin who built the retaining wall. <laughs> right. Good Please, for don't. Her. Please don't. Good for her. Um, I felt good as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't really change my life that much. Um, uh, post getting drains out, which sounds kind of gory, but once your drains are out and your body is able to process that fluid better itself, you feel instantly better. Yeah. And so that was a big step for me. Um, yeah. But there's numbness, there's tingling, there's still a lack of range of motion for a lot of people. I feel very lucky that my surgeries went well. Yeah. Um, I've my last one coming up here. Nice. Um, and I'm hoping and assuming that will go as well. Um, yeah, go well as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! It's, it's the end of the day. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> but I'm, but but you know what? Not everybody's going to heal the same. Absolutely. And so Very that's why point. listening to your body is so key. Staying hydrated. Get outside. Do some exercising. Do some basic stretching. I think everything we focused today was this whole area opening up. Um, I can recommend uh, restorative yoga. Mm -hmm. um, I did bring some blankets. We don't have to do it right now, but it, even just laying some blankets on the floor, putting your your low back, mid back, and upper back on the blanket, supporting your head with a block or another blanket, and just laying there and opening up your chest. Yeah. It's so just simple. Just feeling. It's so simple. Yeah. By raising this part, our shoulders open. Mm -hmm. Now that will not feel good right away. You need to be cleared and yeah. safe to do that. But I can do that almost every night just to remind myself, open up the chest. We, we live in a world where we're hunched over at our computers and our phone, and yeah. we had get, everything gets shortened. So these stretches not just for post breast cancer surgery people but for all of us we need to remember to open up yeah and so it's great that your cousin had a wonderful experience i hope yeah. she's doing well she is great she is right so and you're so, right not everyone is going to build a retaining wall and all that <laughs> but it's a good point to bring up and i just wanted to kind of bring our uh, analogy one of my favorite analogies to self-myofascial release recovery and self-care is we, uh, you know, if I were to ask all of you, do you brush your teeth every day? I'd probably say yes. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not going to say yes to that? Even if they don't. But um, so we brush our teeth every day before we get a cavity, hopefully, right? To be more proactive than reactive. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage all of you to think about what Patty's talking about and the self myofascial release and the the relax in the nervous system every day, even if it's just for five minutes right. at a time, it really does help. So then we can basically be on the same page, like brushing our teeth, we're taking care of our body every single day. Maybe once in the morning we time it where, oh, I just brushed my teeth, I gotta do some self right, fascia right. release or some relax work. And then at night, oh, I just brushed my teeth. I just, mm -hmm. you know, now I need to do my my own stuff. You know, for me, this is my time. Right. So I think that could really help with coordinating your schedule. Um, right. So it's a little bit easier maybe to manage. Right. One thing I, I picked up from somebody else, I can't claim it as my own, but they said stress, you know, habits rule under stress. Mm -hmm. So brushing your teeth is a habit. We even think about it. Habit right. is something you kind of do without thinking. So your habits will rule. They will take over when you're stressed. Yeah. So if you can make self-care, self-time, yeah. self-massage, giving yourself that gift of time as one of your new habits, then that will be what you go to when you're stressed versus all the other things that we might do when we're stressed, right? <laughs> so many things. Making <laughs> chocolate. And, um, <laughs> oh, anyway. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Patty. You're I welcome. so appreciate you being here. It's been a blast. And we hope you enjoyed all of Patty's recommendations and techniques. Uh, let us know what you think by commenting. Um, we always have our tips and tricks and recommendations at Rad Roller Team on Instagram. We have a fantastic YouTube page that we hope you can check out as well. And just stay in touch with us. Let us know uh, if there's anything that you want to learn more about uh, and any techniques or body areas that you want to uh, explore with us. So, to your good health. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs>